direct mail. A lot of times I'll go to like a window cleaning roofing company, have a very aggressive offer, send postcards to a bunch of people. It's called the spray and pray method, mm -hmm. spray mail everywhere. And literally after you send it to the post office, pray that you get enough back. Welcome back to Dope Conversations. Dave Carroll is going to be talking to us today about direct mail. And before I get into it, I need to tell you as an entrepreneur, I don't give a shit about direct mail. I don't want anything to do with print. And you are here not to tell it, not to convince us otherwise, but to tell us why you have a thriving business centered around exactly that and why it might be something people like me are, are just like not paying attention to because we're obsessed with all the stupid Facebook hacks and Instagram, this and that. Uh, and I think we started off a lot of this conversation last night, but you think there's a revolution going on and I want to hear about it. I feel like an entrepreneur has five fingers on their hand for a reason. <laughs> Four things that should be working and one thing that you can get rid of and replace with something that might fuck around and take over one of those four. Direct mail goes into a science of advertising. I like to look at things like history, things that are tried and true. I don't need to ask why something works. I need to ask why something's gonna work for what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. And so when you look at advertising in general, what's the job of advertising and marketing? Well, first, you gotta make someone aware of what you're doing. I like to say like, you started your business and your customers have a hundred problems. You probably solve one to seven of those perfectly. That's why you're in business. People have pain, you have a solution. So when you first start your business, the idea is like, how many, you have, you have more time than you have jobs or work orders or things to sell or whatever. 100. So now you have to look at your time and say, how can I put myself in the position to tell as many people about the problem that I solve to let the, there's a stat and I've seen it range from three to 6%, but it's like three to 6% of your target customer needs exactly what you're doing right now. It's your job to put your message in front of them. When you go to marketing this day and age, it's like, there's a lot of, there's a lot of ways to do that. There's different marketing touches. Mm -hmm. Touches have value. So like you can run without much experience. You can get on like Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Snapchat, and like put your message out there in front of a bunch of people that don't know who you are yet. But how valuable is that touch? We, we've all been on Instagram today. Ask yourself, what, like, what was the last ad I saw on Instagram? You have no idea. Like it's, it's hard to remember. Even those, for those of you that can, that saw a great ad, you ask seven out of 10 people that, like they have no clue. Mm. We did some research and our friends at Harvard helped us out. Rich, you're a Harvard grad. Yeah, also, yeah Both of us, Harvard yes. alma maters, right? Yeah, totally. <laughs> so at Harvard, what they taught Rich and I was that it takes seven to 11 touches for a consumer to remember a brand. And real quick, so a touch, I just want to be very clear for the audience. It doesn't matter if you're a mature entrepreneur or new, a touch is just they saw and listened to you or just a, what Define kind of a touch as an impression. Okay. So like they saw an ad, they saw your vehicle that has a wrap or a magnet. Mm -hmm. They saw a billboard. Uh, they saw um, Google search, Facebook, yard sign. Does it mean they retained hanger. anything? So you have touches and you have channels. No, it doesn't. Cause then there's a value to the touch. Okay. So now it's like when you show someone something, how likely are they to remember it? Mm -hmm. And how much does that align with the other touches? So like if someone sees your truck at the gas station or someone sees your polo for your company, how much does that follow the branding of your website, your ads, mm -hmm. the messaging you're putting out? Just like marketing psychology. I go back to like humans are predictable creatures. You gotta be gentle with these little creatures. Like <laughs> they're very distracted. Oh, for yeah. any of you that have run like billboard ads, you'll see uh, for billboards, you're like Clear Channel or whatever, these huge companies, they'll say how many impressions you would get from the people, 23,462 people drive down this street an hour. That's an impression of a billboard that they used to be able to sell off of. Well now, Humans are so distracted. There's fucking a billboard on your phone all day. Yes. There's this stuff driving. There's the radio. There's the TV. There's the streaming services. There's all these other things that are happening. What's happened is because of the focus on digital marketing and really how easy it is. You don't need a fucking MBA from our alma mater, Harvard, to get on Facebook, record a video or have an image and like do some pretty detailed targeting yeah. and show that to people. Now, is it working? 
well, it's for another conversation. Yep. But that touch still has value. You're still putting a brand in front of people. And so when I think about like direct mail, I think about like the year I was born, 1985. It's a while ago. Sadly, nine out of 10 companies that you as a business owner would go to for, doesn't matter what it is, Rich's Video Services, Alex Jim, Jesse's Jets, mm -hmm. like it doesn't matter. The direct mail consultants today will tell you a strategy from the fucking year I was born. <laughs> and that's wrong. It's fucking criminal to a point. Like, what, Tell me like what, what that might be. A, a very 30,000 foot, here's your strategy, Rich. Here, I'm glad you're interested in direct mail. Dude, direct mail is fucking hard. So let's start there. Okay. But it's like, what's your list? Who are you targeting? You're talking to a print company, not a data company. They have no fucking clue who your list is. So if you go and ask your print company, who should you be targeting with your mail? Strike one. Like you already started off on the wrong foot. Hmm. So now two is like, let's say you figure out this targeting. I want to target homeowners with a home value of this, of whatever. The strategy is going to get pitched to most people is like, let's have a big list and let's mail to them like once a quarter or once every other month. Like let's spend a couple grand to maybe $10,000 on sending mail and getting one impression on someone. When was the last time you had anything happen once in your life and you got the mail? You're like, oh my God, fucking stop it all right now. Put, pump the brakes. Use the analogy. Is it dating and now you're now spouse that you hopped in bed with on the first date? Probably not. Is it a weight loss analogy where like, you went to the gym, looked at the weights one time, and now it's different. Marketing. Is it like you did something once, but direct mail, they're going to tell you like, send mail once a month or once every three months. The fuck do you expect to happen? If you look at the, the traditional strategy of direct mail, it is, a, first off, let's start with the transaction amount. You're getting pitched on like thousands, if not tens of thousands of dollars for the course of the year to put a wager on the fact that like, something's gonna happen without many other things happening or leading up to that thing. Yeah. Direct mail, a lot of times, I'll go to like a window cleaning, roofing company, some shit like that. It's like, have a very aggressive offer, send postcards to a bunch of people. It's called the spray and pray method. Mm -hmm. Spray mail everywhere. And literally after you send it to the post office, pray that you get enough back that hopefully like you break even and can be educated by your print company that told you to do this on why you didn't lose money. So now you should probably try it again, probably try it again. Probably, and I'm not saying there's not different examples, sure. but as a standard, a direct mail company is going to say, get a list of at least a thousand people, send out a mailing once a month or once every couple months, and then we'll check the ROI based on a call tracking number or how many times that offer got claimed. Like it's very hard to track traditional direct mail and not have it just be like extremely expensive mm -hmm. and just not come from this place of like how people think mm -hmm. today. Mm -hmm. So then if that's the, the old way, yeah. Dope has a different approach. And if you're joining us for the first time, so Dave is the founder and CEO here at Dope Marketing, direct mail, print yeah. ads, all the, all the whole nine. Yep. What was your approach when you decided this is not the way we want to do it? And we'll probably have to split this up into a couple episodes, but like your initial reaction to like looking at this. And I was just watching an interview with Dana White and he last night. And he was ta listening to announcers of a Mike Tyson match and the announcers were just like shredding Mike Tyson. It's like their job is not to criticize the boxer going into the ring. Their job is to analyze. Do you know what I'm saying? And I thought he was like, I didn't know it, but I eventually when I started the company that was stuck in my brain that my people will never be like that. It sounds like you observed all this direct mail uh, kind of old, outdated things. And yeah. you're like, here's an opportunity what was your initial vision as a visionary that like, here's how it can be different. It came from my power washing business. We were sending like a hundred thousand pieces of mail a month. Cause I saw that's what other people were doing. And I was like, this is too hard. Like the time, the effort, the labor. And it just, it didn't make sense with dope. I saw that like postcards are tiny little billboards. Mm -hmm. So you have these online digital funnels where it's like step one. If you take this action, step two, if you have this action, step three, it's telling a story mm -hmm. based on the engagement of the user with how much they're raising their hand or how much they're interested. Yep. And sorry to get all like Bill Nye for any of you non-marketing people. I just get hopped up about this shit. But it's like, when you look at what your job is in a marketing campaign, it's to take your customer down the hand and walk them down the path of them like having a transaction at the end. Mm -hmm. What has to happen before that? Again, all the corny analogies. You gotta warm them up. You gotta mm -hmm. take them on a first date. You mm -hmm. gotta ask them questions. You gotta get their answers. You gotta go through all this stuff. And so like what I've seen is 
when we started dope, the idea of sending mail like a couple times a year or something, it didn't make sense because that touch is more valuable. Sure. If I can put a tiny little billboard in your mailbox, this isn't a digital impression. This isn't like a Facebook, Instagram thing you might see and forget. This isn't a flyby like, you know, I'm playing on my phone and I'm listening to the TV streaming service with the kids and they run an ad targeted to the parents. Like it's not this subconscious thing. It's the value of a touch, the value of putting something in someone's hands yes. over and over and over and reminding them. So I started testing it before we opened the company. I was like, what if I just get a small list of people that I'm targeting? So our business is in the Twin Cities, our power washing business. There's this neighborhood where like Prince and Kevin Garnett and Jesse Ventura used to live. It's called North Oaks. And so I'm like, up at, there's another one up at Lake Minnetonka. Well, basically like I took this little pocket of homeowners that just had a home valued over $4 million. And I was like, what would happen if we just sent them a postcard every week for eight weeks in a row? Dang. If I worked. And so I was like, but it's hard. If you walk into a print shop or a mailing company and you're like, all right, I got to list a hundred people and I want to send them a postcard every single week at no minimum order automated from my CRM. These nice people at, you know, the UPS store, Minuteman, Got Print, Vista Print, whatever would look at you. Their eyes would cross. They would throw up and they'd ask you to leave. Why? Because technology didn't keep up. The print space is run by like 70 year old fat dudes who suck at golf, whose kids don't want to work for them. I'm just your nephew, Dave. Like I fucking love this shit. But the direct mail stuff came from the data. It came from the targeting. We got a whole nother episode yeah. about data and targeting and like that being my background and shit. But it's more like when you looked at the way mail was being done, it wasn't spending thousands of dollars to get a blanket shotgun message out. Like there was a day and a time where that worked. Sure. That was before the internet. Mm -hmm. Now it's like when you think about the detailed targeting that's available on these online channels, what if you could do that? The question I asked myself was like, what if you could do that same granular targeting, but put something in someone's hands, not to change the, like come out with this new thing to complement what's already working in your business. So we're going to wrap, but like, I could tell you when you mentioned something about this last night, I had a side conversation with your wife, Bryn. Yeah. And I was like, the more I think about what you're doing, when I go to my mailbox, I'm not in scrolling mode. I'm actually looking very intentionally. Bro, you're in mailbox mode. I'm yeah. I'm like, do I have a bill? Do I have something from the DMV? Of course, 50% of it is whatever. Like, or the old people who used to live at that home. I'm like, all right, trash, trash. But I'm looking with way more scrutiny than I am ever on Facebook or Instagram. It's not an immediate scroll. It's like I have to look at it. And I will tell you if dope or this cleaning service or this car wash mobile detailing service if they did eight weeks in a row the pain of just telling them to stop which we could get into next episode yeah that's an impression and that's a valuable touch and we're going to get into the data and targeting portion of it in the next episode i can't well, wait for end this. this with the 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 revolution <laughs> to end on an exclamation with yes, this one ask yourself this question as a business owner if you were doing everything you were doing right now in your business you're running ads, you're doing estimates, you're, you're shaking hands, kissing babies, saving cats from trees. You're doing all that in neighborhood A, but in neighborhood B or list B or whatever in your business, you were doing all of that. But on top of it, your prospects were getting a postcard once a week, eight weeks in a row, explaining what you do, how you do it, the problems you solve, all that. Where would you have more conversions? We'll see you next time.